In this video we're going to look at collisions. Collisions are really important in games because we need to know whether our players or characters or actors are touching other things on the game. So for example, they might be shooting bullets or jumping on platforms or collecting coins. For each of those cases we need to know whether our actor is actually touching something else. Setting up collisions in Stencil isn't that hard. There are a couple of things you need to know that can get you really stuck kind of frustrated as to why things aren't working. Before we go any further, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. We've got our croc character, and I'm in the properties tab here, and I'm just going to rename that, because I really don't like that name. So that's a rename done there. And what I need to do now is go to Stencil Forge, and I actually need to grab something for our crocodile character to interact with, to touch. So let's grab randomly a pineapple. Why don't we rename it while we're here? like so and let's throw it into the level that we've already got going on so let's put that on the floor there and immediately let's test the scene and see what happens and here we have the crocodile still moving the jumps are working really well and let's see what happens okay and we have an immediate collision there it's not really useful because it's just a pineapple being pushed around but it's working quite well so let's see what's going on here what we have in each of our characters, that's the croc and the pineapple, is we have a physics tab. Now, it's worth noting what's going on here. So we have gravity on. We needed that for the jumps. Over here, we have the rotating option. I switched off rotation because I don't want my character spinning around in the air. And over here, I've told the actor to be a normal type of actor. So that is a uh, character who can move and can be moved rather than a cannot move or a cannot be pushed so a, n a normal character is what you generally want to stick with if we check the pineapple and look at the same physics tab for the pineapple now you can see that it can rotate I'm going to switch that off right now and again it's normal now when we're talking about collisions let's go back to our croc and our collision tab now what you'll see is that we have a set of collision boundaries what that means is Stencil has drawn around a character the boundaries or the outline of where collisions will take place. In this case, you can see there's a big square, some small squares, and a circle. That roughly is okay. The same thing is true for the pineapple. As you can see, they've just kind of drawn a big rectangle around it, and that really doesn't bother me because it's not really important in my game which part of the pineapple is touched. It just has to be touched. Now, something that I want to talk about, which is really important in stencil and really confusing at the same time, is this thing about groups. So while we're in the collisions, you can see that there's some groups here. You'll also see them in the properties at the bottom where it says which group does this actor belong to. If we see our choices, we have actors, we have doodads, players, regions and tiles. Tiles are obvious, regions are obvious. Where we get kind of tricky is players, doodads, and actors. Well, the best way to show you what's going on is to click on the Edit Groups button over here, which brings up the Game Settings panel to the groups. So, if you now look at the right-hand side, we have actors, doodads, players, regions, and tiles. Tiles are obvious because that's what we draw our background and our platforms with. Regions are basically parts of a game that are never allowed to collide with anything else. It could be backgrounds, it could be other things. Players. Players are a group that only collide with tiles. So for example, if you had something in your game which was in the group players, it could only collide with the tiles. In other words, they could jump on platforms and not fall through the floor. But if you had actors and players trying to collide with them, they would not recognize the collision. Doodads, again, is a group that's not allowed to collide with anything else. And the default that most characters go into or most actors go into is the actors group. And as you can see, actors can collide with other actors and they can collide with tiles, but they can't collide with players. Now, it gets kind of complicated, but you'll get there if you study this for a few minutes. So what we have here is our croc that belongs to the actors group. And we have a pineapple that belongs to the actors group. And according to this, actors are allowed to collide with actors. Now let's change an option here in the collision for the pineapple. And let's say that it cannot move. And let's test the game immediately and see what that does to the game. As you can see, because we said the pineapple is not allowed to move, 
it doesn't fall down because of gravity. So that overrides the gravity setting. And if you have a look, the crocodile now cannot go past the pineapple. So that's a, a really useful way of creating something like an obstacle. Now you can also create it with a tile, but it might be in your game you want an obstacle to fall out of the sky or the level to change in some way. And this is a really useful way in getting something to become an obstacle while being an actor. Now in the next video, what we're going to do is try to create a collision between the crocodile and the pineapple where the crocodile actually dies, or in stencil terms, where it's killed.